In our world of CGI and digital effects, it's easy to forget that mechanical and in-camera effects, um, old ones, are still used today and a lot of times along with uh, our digital tools. We're going to show you how to match a person in frame. Uh, it's a really cool trick, very old. And we're going to also uh, show you how to make a person pop in to frame and also to pop out. If you grew up on reruns like I did, then you would remember a lot of shows that used in-camera effects to have uh, people or things disappear, appear, or even change. Now, if you think those in-camera effects are antiquated, well, think again. They're still used today. What works, works. It's simple. Um, and it's used today for teleporting in and out, for example, on Picard and the other Star Trek TV shows, and even the movies. Now, how do they do it? Simple. If you want someone to pop in or teleport into the frame, you start with an empty frame. You have them then, the actor, walk into position, hit their mark, get ready, and action. And then you take the clip in post and you just cut out the part where they walk onto set. Boom, they pop on. And then if you, you can add like a digital effect or something to sort of sell the teleport effect or the pop in or whatever it is. To have them pop out or teleport out, you just do the reverse. I added a practical effect when I teleported out by just flashing uh, some bright lights on uh, the background and on the set to kind of help sell the effect and you know just see if it works and it kind of worked you can also add other practical effects like if it's a magician disappearing you could add smoke uh, and then just cut to that empty frame they're not there but the smoke is there what if you need a person to match the exact same spot and position that they were in before. Uh, like the shot with uh, Colin um, in the video we did about uh, breaking down a script. Here he's seated on a park bench and he's in the exact same position, rapidly changing clothes. Well, I'm sorry guys, this one does require some pretty serious hardware and software and, and expensive at that and a lot of people. No, it doesn't. This requires a, a 50 cent piece of acetate and a and a, and a marker. That's it. It's crazy simple. Okay, so you ready for this? What do we do with the acetate? You tape it to the monitor. That's right. You tape it to the monitor and you draw on the acetate. It's crazy old school. Um, the outline of the actor. Now, you gotta do a little more in the actor you, you, than the outline that is. You have the actor freeze, do the outline, and then also do the outline positions of arms and elbows uh, and, and legs. Um, it's very important because a, an, an elbow and arm can be twisted and turned a little bit out from the body and the leg and how their, a leg is resting on another and an arm on another. You want to match that uh, uh, as much as possible. Now it can also be tricky with a change of clothes because some clothes are puffier or bigger than others. Um, so really what you want to do is just uh, try your best and really have it be where the physical arm underneath that shirt or, or leg or wherever it is. Right elbow. Uh, sucked into the body. Um, right knee down, away from the body, a half inch. Oh, and slide your right hand half an inch away from your. Yep, perfect. Thumb in. Now you might think, um, you know, just. By talking to the actor like that, just give them the monitor. Well, you could do that, but the monitor's reversed to where they are. Um, you've got to put it in their eye line, and it it it's just really a little tricky. It we I find it's just easier to um, tell the actor and give them where to go and move, because. Um, also, even if they did it themselves, I then have to finalize it. I got to look and make sure, yes, they're in the exact right spot. Now, there are other ways to do this where if you had a bigger, a, a, a more in-depth video set up with multiple monitors, you could, you could have a monitor, uh, an overlay with a transparency 
on one monitor from the previous take and all that kind of stuff. But again, that just takes a little bit more uh, of a setup. And here, we're just showing you an old school way to do it that just works. Here, we've got a locked off camera. Lo I mean, and when I say locked off, you sandbag that camera. Make sure everything's locked and nothing's going to move. Another thing that's important is when you're using the sun, like we were here, it's very important um, to do those takes as close to each other as possible because the sun is moving and that background can change. Uh, so don't uh, do like they did in this uh, old film where they probably took all day to move a very uh, heavy piece of, of, of set equipment. Uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the sun really did change. As you can see, it's kind of fun to do these in-camera effects, and you can do them with whatever camera you have, even your phone. Um, it's really, most of it's just done in post in the editing, but it, you could do a lot of really fun stuff. And, you know, with people, it's important to have, you know, that person pop in and out, but I mean, here's a clip from Bewitched where they were floating a bowl, a fruit bowl or flower bowl, um, and if you do it frame by frame, you can see it's not exactly matched when she pops in. But it doesn't matter because when she pops in holding that bowl with flowers, uh, the focus is no longer on the bowl, it's on her. So you don't notice that it shifts over. And also, you know, I always say shoot test. So have fun. It's, it's um, some cool in-camera tricks. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Um, uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below um, or any fun things you've done or would like to do with in-camera effects. Catch you later.